Hello, I'm Lindsay Jane, and welcome to the Solar Punk Scene. I've been dealing with some health issues and serious life changes, so today's video is going to be a quick foray into a much deeper subject, and that's on how cities can be sanctuaries for nature in our modern world. While we may associate cities with being devoid of anything but concrete and people, intelligent urban planning and care for our environment can turn cities into havens that are abundant with life. We're going to be looking at a few ways that your city can be transformed. The footage that you're currently seeing is from an older video of mine where we go from the midtown of Toronto to an urban forest ravine that's just steps away from a subway system. Links will be included in the description down below for each step of this. Number one, focus on clean water efforts. Water is life, with people and animals always needing access to clean drinking water. Cities are especially likely to pollute their waterways because the potential for pollutants increases with the growing population. Wildlife will leave the area or die out if there's no clean drinking water outside of pipes directing water to homes and businesses. Clean water efforts like pollution reduction bills and frequent chemical testing will ensure everyone in the area has something to drink and the animals have safe water habitats or access points. Number two, reduce airborne pollutants. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, urban areas experience more significant amounts of airborne pollutants than rural areas due to the increased number of automobiles and other machinery burning fossil fuels in a condensed location. Wildlife suffers from those pollutants too, so any efforts to convert cities or urban buildings to green energy will make those places safer for living beings in those areas. Ways for individuals to help reduce air pollutants include carpooling, using public transportation, biking or walking whenever possible, using environmentally safe paints and cleaning products whenever possible, mulching or composting leaves and the yard waste, and many more. Number three, optimize animal control services. Animals will find their way into cities for various reasons. Whether they're outrunning the effects of climate change, seeking food or finding shelter, urban residents will run into unwanted animals. If animal control services aren't involved with making cities a haven for wildlife, they may contribute to the decreasing animal populations due to mistreatment or putting animals down. When residents need wildlife removed from their homes, businesses, or city streets, animal control services can optimize their responses by letting animals go in approved locations that are the best places for natural habitats. The animals will be much happier and stay where experts drop them off, so their populations thrive more easily within those designated havens. Number four, grow more native plants. Along with deer and other wildlife, we need to protect our local insects too. Cement cities and residential areas often erase insect havens by uprooting plant species and replacing them with plants from other locations. Insects need local plant life to thrive, so city residents, landscaping companies, and environmental offices should focus on keeping them in the area. Insects are part of the complex chain that is the ecosystem, and a broken link could have catastrophic consequences. Planting the right flowers in window boxes or along city streets will help insects remain in urban areas because they have the right sources of food. Number five, establish public gardens. Public gardens alongside roadways or within parks are a great way to make cities a haven for wildlife. They tackle many issues that keep animals away from cities by absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen that living organisms need in urban areas with airborne pollutants. Gardens could also become organic food sources for city food banks and utilize all natural fertilizers to reduce chemicals and water runoff. Not only have green spaces been found to massively benefit wildlife, but they also benefit people too. Green spaces have been found to help with stress levels, general health, and creating a deeper connection to nature, which we need now more than ever. Number six, convert unused properties. There's always unused properties within city limits. Empty malls and abandoned houses could easily transform into grassy lots that are havens for wildlife. City officials would have to pass regulations confirming when lots would become subject to dismantlement and transform into places for animals to live, eat, and rest. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the short video. While it may not be one of my more in-depth videos, it's still an important subject. It's important for us to organize and create change where needed for the future. I'm going to be getting married on August 1st, and due to other life changes, such as developing a disability in my hands, my next video will be a bit delayed, but I'll be getting it out to you. As always, thank you to my amazing patrons, and thank you for watching my video. If you have a suggestion on what you'd like my next video to be, comment down below. Until next time, have a great day!